Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Create an Interactive Health Science Program with Wearable Simulators. My name is Katie Stacy, and I'm on the marketing team here at RealityWorks. I'll be moder moderating today's webinar. I'm here with Janice Bodart, Product Manager with RealityWorks, who will pre be presenting our webinar today. Before we begin today's presentation, I'd like to review a few quick logistics. A recorded version of the webinar will be available following today's presentation. A copy of the recording will be emailed to all attendees. All attendees will also receive a certificate of completion and for taking the time to attend today. We'd love to hear from you, so you can ask a question anytime using the questions and answers button in the upper left corner of your screen. All questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. With that, I'll turn it over to Denise. Um, good morning and welcome to today's webinar on creating an interactive health science program with wearable simulators. Um, now, we'll go ahead and we'll take a quick look at what we're going to be discussing today. We will um, be talking a little bit more about just who is today's student and how do you reach and teach these generations, these students best. And then we'll get into specific ideas for wearable simulators you can make yourself. And um, we'll also be I'm um, sharing some other um, wearable simulators that are available along with some best practices and some additional resources. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and we will um, take a look, first of all, a little bit about RealityWorks. Um, we are uh, based in Wisconsin, but we are an international company. We're in over 90 countries worldwide, and we are very um, uh, uh, involved with uh, current technical education and things like that. So as a result of that, um, our leadership as well as um, many of our employees are on ACT and other um, boards around the country. So let's take a little bit, a closer look again at RealityWorks um, products and programs. And um, we um, tend to um, put together um, full solutions that include uh, a curriculum along with uh, all the various products. We um, are trying to engage Gen Z in some hands-on learning opportunities that will stick with them so it helps them to um, retain all of the different skills that they're learning in their CT classes. So let's take a closer look, as we said earlier, just who is today's student? Now the times are definitely changing. You know, we, we know that there are sometimes non-traditional students, especially at the college level that belong to Gen Z, but as you, are, as you instruct this, this new generation, whatever you knew about millennials, well, you can forget about that because this generation is very different in how they learn and view the world. So this generation tends to be very tech savvy. Um, while millennials were seen with two screens, Generation X can go between five screens, things like phones, tablets, computers, and gaming devices. They can multitask between all of them and they tend to have a much a shorter attention span. They're used to tweets and instant messaging instead of those long lengthy emails. Now research from Microsoft has found that the human attention span is definitely shorting. At just eight seconds, they say it is now shorter than the attention span of the average goldfish, which in 2000 was 12 seconds. So as educators, how do we work with this goldfish population? While it introduces some challenges, it also creates significant opportunities. So let's take a closer look now at who is Gen Z? Well, as we said earlier, Gen Z view, views the internet and online resources as knowing more than teachers. Now, if you had a student that has challenged you in class or sent you an email about something they found online that contradicted uh, the textbook or your lecture, you know, they tend to connect more easily with teachers and professors as facilitators or guides. Now, the most effective teachers will be doing tasks right along with students and showing them it's definitely okay to make mistakes. Now, instructors are no, no longer necessarily um, leading the discussion. They are now coaching and adapting um, teaching strategies for this new generation, and it's no easy task. Instructors will also need to change the way they think of themselves. Again, not an easy thing to do. So this generation tends to read less and prefer that active hands-on learning. They want to be successful, but will definitely disengage from the learning if they don't see the relevance. So how do we teach this, this generation? Well, we definitely need to modify what we've been doing. If you use those 50 minute PowerPoints, incorporate things like quizzes, activities, and hands-on demos every few slides. You know, provide them with more than just that textbook. 
Things like videos or online activities, group work and models work extremely well with this group. You know, use that variety to keep their attention and give them an experience. Try to be flexible in your teaching methods and the way you communicate with students. Now, another aspect we need to concentrate on as educators are those soft skills. Students will come to you with varying levels of these skills. Now, these skills can be acquired through things like observation, reading, teaching, training, experience, and so on. But are we emphasizing them as much as we do those hard skills, such as procedures? A widening gap is being noticed between the expectation of companies during the employment process and the performance of the job applicants in the area of soft skills. Now, soft skills not only enhance employability for candidates, but they contribute to the company's success. Healthcare is a business where customer satisfaction is important. And since 2012, Medicare and Medicaid services began withholding hospitals Medicare reimbursement based on their quality performance. 30% of the decision is derived from a measure of customer satisfaction. So our topic today of wearing simulator focus. These tools can help teach soft skills like empathy and communication, but they can also teach hard nursing skills such as IV starts, injections, and medication administration. So let's take a, a, just a brief look at some of the research and benefits specifically of wearable simulation experiences. Now simulation technology is well documented as, as a teaching methodology, especially in health science education. And here's just one quote from many of the studies that you can find out there on the effectiveness of simulation. Now, moving on, a wearable simulator specifically are a great way to teach empathy and understanding of what patients are going through. We believe that this will result in better patient care. Wearable simulators offer a chance to teach key patient communication skills as well. So today you'll have a chance to hear about some of the wearable simulators, not only that you can make, but that are also available to you. So how do you enable students to walk in the shoes of an older adult? Well, that's where wearable age simulation suits and age simulation activities can be so effective. The research backs up the efficacy of these tools and activities. Now, according to a study at the Julius Maximilian University of Würzburg on the effectiveness of age simulation, for example, 83% of participants were able to emphasize with life in old age, you know, very well. Well, 95% of participants had a better understanding of the phys physical conditions of aging. So now we're going to talk some about wearable simulation ideas that you can make yourself. So the first one that we'd like to share is about visual impairment. Now, you could take glasses, smear them with soap or Vaseline, and simulate cataracts, a general cloudiness to the vision. Wearing glasses also made of the wrong prescription or wearing sunglasses indoors can also simulate conditions like macular degeneration or glaucoma. You can also use sleep masks for total blindness. Now for arthritis in hands and feet, you could tape together the thumb and forefinger of your dominant hand and then bind the three fingers of the other hand to restrict movement and fine motor skills. Now popcorn kernels placed in socks and shoes can also simulate the foot pain associated with things like poor circulation, neuropathy, and arthritis. And then if you put your hands in gloves filled with unpopped popcorn kernels, it can dull the finger's ability to feel, also simulating arthritis. So loss of tactile sensation and numbness in the extremities due to aging is very common. To simulate this in the hands, you could try a variety of different types of gloves. Wearing several pairs of thick gloves while writing, tying a shoe or buttoning a shirt to simulate, or wearing thinner gloves while filling pill bottles can simulate impairments such as numbness or neuropathy. Wrist and hand braces can also be used for things like loss of dexterity or restricted range of motion. Now for hearing impairment to simulate that, you could uh, easily use earplugs or noise canceling headphones. Things like um, tinnitus, you know, the ringing in the ears could be stimulated by simply um, playing a sustained, sustained high-pitched noise of some sort. Hearing loss over time could be stimulated by gradually turning down the volume on a device or using music or the sound of voices. So to simulate conditions such as COPD or emphysema, you could do the following. First of all, have your students breathe through a straw as long as they can. Very, very difficult. Or you could get a compression garment or a binder to enable wearers to physically experience COPDs, typically you know, strenuous, labored, shallow, upper uh, chest breathing only, as well as the subsequent fatigue, irritability, and emotional distress that inevitably results with a sensation of not being able to get enough air. 
you can see that there's a um, sample compression binder on the screen in front of you. You can find these things online. Also, the use of Velcro can help you accommodate um, more sizes if you decide to purchase one for this type of simulation. Now, to create an aging simulation experience, you could gather a series of things from a Walmart or even a budget online source and have things like uh, ankle and wrist weights, ace bandages, back braces, uh, weight training vests, along with interacting with things like canes and walkers. These things all put together could simulate mobility ch challenges like fatigue, loss of strength, and restricted range of motion. Even osteoporosis, which is that stupid posture from wearing a, a weight training vest, could be simulated. Now, ankle weight specifically can help simulate a shuffled gait, as seen with some elderly people. Now, hemiparesis is a weakness on half of the body, while hemiplegia refers to paralysis that affects just one side. Because paralysis is an extreme form of weakness in nervous function, hemiplegia is an extreme form of hemiparesis. So to simulate this paralysis on one side, you could use a series of braces and bandages on the one side to make it difficult to do daily tasks and also ambulate uh, simulated stroke or other related uh, causes of this condition. While there are several commercial pregnancy simulators available, here are a quick do-it-yourself projects that you could try. For example, you could take a backpack and begin by uh, filling it uh, about 25 or 30 pounds. Now the goal here is to fill up the space in the backpack representing the average weight gain by that third trimester. Then you have the participant wear it backward so they can feel the difference in their center of gravity. Or you could simply take something that you can fill with warm water, perhaps like a hot water bottle, or even a beach ball uh, partially filled up. You could wrap it in a baby sling and wear it low on the abdomen. You could also um, pick up something like a medicine ball or smaller exercise ball that has some weight to it. You could have students try to tie their shoes, pick things up off the floor, sit and stand, and things of that nature. Now, um, here's a simulation experience that could be used in a scenario involving uh, education for things like midwives, doulas, childbirth educators, and so forth. Uh, a very simple one that you could do with uh, easy to find uh, materials, um, maybe even things that would be donated. Now, this is a simulation experience that was recommended to us by a post-secondary CNA instructor. She said her students never again thought the same way about patient dignity and incontinence. Now, this was especially important as her students were going to be working in nursing homes someday, and she wanted them to recognize the importance of being attentive to patient needs as well as pride and dignity. So again, she had them each take an adult diaper, and they went into the restroom, they had to pour a small cup of water into it, and then they had to wear it during the duration of the class period. Uh, very uncomfortable, again, but boy, did that create an experience that, that those students will remember forever. So now we would like to share a few best practices for using wearables in your health science program. First of all, tip number one is to encourage group interactions whenever possible so that students can build off each other's experiences. Um, I know that when we've done things like had, had uh, groups of students uh, do uh, pregnancy simulations together and things, the discussion is so much richer and they're comparing notes and they're saying, oh, do you feel this? Do you feel that? And it just makes it so much, so much more exciting. Um, also, using stations is a good way to implement a variety of experiences to rotate through. And it also makes classroom management easier with less wait time for students. So you could also consider assigning your students to a specific role at each station. Like one of them could be the patient, and then the other student could be the healthcare worker at that station so that they have the chance to experience not only the physical condition with the wearable, but then also experience helping someone with that condition. A uh, few more best practices. Provide opportunities for reflection after each experience. Uh, you could do this as a large group or a small group or even in pairs. You know, think pair share. Uh, journaling exercises are a really good way uh, to provide key questions for students to answer about their experience. And just, just always be thinking how you can provide that pre and post reflection activity in your exercises. Now, here are a few very good questions for at the end of the experience. Now, make sure to facilitate reflection on individual performance. Ask them to think about how did it go? You know, how did it feel? How did you feel during the experience? How will this change your future interactions with your patients? Um, but definitely, how, 
how after going through the, the simulation using the wearable, how will that change the way you deal with patients in the future? You know, how has this changed you? So all really good things for students to think about. Now we know that some wearables give students a chance to walk in the shoes to gain empathy and understanding, but there are also another line of wearable simulators that teach specific nursing related hard skills. Um, We've given you a lot of ideas for yourself, but we can save you time with wearable simulation products. You know, all of the ones that, that we're going to share that we have have curricula that use a simulator in the lesson plan, and all of them have been uh, tested extensively for quality. So um, we know that, again, that uh, wearables can definitely teach those empathy skills, but we, and those are very, very important. So some of the ones, you know, that, that we have available that um, help, help teach empathy, of course, are our fully immersive geriatric simulation suit. We talked a little bit about a pregnancy simulation and how that could be done. We have a hemiplegia simulator that can be worn on either side of the body. Our hearing impairment simulator is interesting because it simulates four different uh, hearing impairment uh, different conditions. Our arthritis simulator, again, is the difficulty of, of hand movement. And the visual impairment simulator um, simulates six different visual conditions. So all of those, again, allow students the ability to walk in the shoes of a patient. Now, here's a list of wearables that uh, teach empathy and understanding of what it's like, of course, to have that condition, but nothing will create a more memorable and impactful experience, um, again, like someone who's actually walked in the shoes of someone with that condition. We also have things like moulage kits that can go on students as a wearable or a mannequin from which to create many different scenarios involving things like skin assessment, documentation, and treatment. And wearables are also a great way, again, to teach those hard nursing skills um, in addition to to those soft skills such as patient communication. Um, and wearables, in addition to things like communicating with them while you've got it on, can also be te teaching things like um, blood pressure, um, injections, you know, IV venipuncture, all of those types of, of skills can be, can be taught from a wearable as well. And again, here's just a short list of some of those wearable simulators that, that we have that are ready to use that come with curricula. And um, students can, can wear them. You can also um, have different uh, standardized patient scenarios that, that you could also use them in. But uh, again, you're, the main thing that you're trying to do is get students to have that buy-in on the realism and have them understand what it's like to be a patient on the receiving end, as well as the healthcare provider that are you know, using those skills in real life. And wearables are just such a powerful way for your students to get that that insight into having to do that patient communication. It's a much different ballgame when they're doing things like injections um, into uh, a wearable that is on a live person than when they're just doing it when the, the injection pad is just sitting on a table, when they have to look the, the patient in the eye and talk to them and explain what they're going to do, you know, and, and patients are going to flinch, they're going to react, and that those are all skills that we want our um, students to become very, very confident in uh, being able to handle so that before they go into the real world, they've been given as many tools as they can so that they're, they're well equipped to deal with those. Now, we've shared, you know, uh, wearable do your owns. We've shared a few resources of the, of the things that we've got available at our website. So at this point, we would like to open it up to any questions that you would have on some of the wearables that we've, that we've shared today. And again, if you have questions, you can certainly uh, type them into the chat button. And we're going to go ahead and turn it back to Katie to share those questions with us as they've been posted. Thanks, Denise. Um, it's not looking like we have any questions at this time. You can always follow up with us if you do end up having questions in the future. Um, you can email information at realityworks.com or if you know um, any of the um, representatives that are in your area, you can always reach out to them directly as well. So Thank you very much for taking the time to uh, spend the last half hour with us all about wearables and we hope you'll find them a very effective tool in your health science program. Thank you.